Hello and welcome to, oh, the, welcome second to the second part of the shopping tutorial. In this one I will talk about field papers. Field papers is a method to use pen and paper for a survey rather than um, a mobile phone or something technical like that. So if you prefer things like that or if people in your group prefer things that aren't done on a smartphone, this would be for you. It is very well suited for urban surveying of buildings but can also be used for field names and such. I have done two tutorials on that already. You can skip to those if you want to. Uh, this one will be about urban surveying because we will be looking at shops. My friend Kiran has already done a tutorial on field papers and in an urban context. I will link that in the corner there. Uh, so if you're tired of my voice or my face, um, you can watch his tutorial. You won't see his face, I think. He just did a screen recording. Field papers is also good for remote collecting of data because you can send off the paper pages to the person who wants to participate and they can fill in the data from their location. So if you want to organize something centrally and send out paper for people to fill in, this is a really good opportunity to use field papers, which we have been doing for our field name survey. And that's working really well as long as people have a legible handwriting. So in the first part, I will tell you how to create an atlas using field papers. And in the second part, I will fill in the form and then tell you how to get that data into OpenStreetMap. We go to the field papers website, which is fieldpapers.org. And again, you have a top menu, make an atlas to print, upload pages you have marked, watch recent activity, extend with advanced tools and log in. I usually don't log in because I'm hoping that everything works out. So I won't this time. So I'm going to click on make yourself an atlas. And it shows you a map of the world. And I want to do one on Irish town in Kilkenny. So I'm going to zoom in first. So there we have it, Irish Town. You see some of the shops are already done. I think that's actually an outdated view, but we'll have to live with that for now. In the top left corner, you can give your atlas a title. So I'll put in Irish Town and choose your paper size, which is usually A4, I would say and the orientation of the pages. Now this depends entirely on the area that you want to survey. You have to play around with the orientation and also with the number of pages. I'm trying to find out how to not waste paper and to get both rows of buildings on it and for it to be big enough that when I print it off that I can still place notes in it, can write in it. I will try just one page. So up here, that's the standard view that gives that it gives you when you log in. It's just the, the two by one. And up here, you can reduce that to one page. And I can't zoom in anymore on the open street map view. But I didn't want to use it anyway. I wanted to use the black and white. There's a couple of options for the base map, the open street map one black and white, so that's quite printer friendly. And I can zoom in more. I'm probably just gonna go with the one page. But you can see that it is a bit difficult to make out the outlines of the buildings in this because of the pattern that they're um, drawn in. And then we have satellite and labels and the satellite view at the moment when I'm doing this tutorial is Bing. It's probably too, I have to zoom out probably. As I said before, quite terrible at the moment. It might have changed once if you watch this in a couple of weeks, months or years, it might have changed. But you see I have satellite view and the labels means it has the street names on it. You can also use satellite only like I did in my field names tutorial. For the countryside, it's usually 
good enough to use the satellite view. It's just a field and hedges, and you know, it's not much detail. You don't have to try to make out different types of roofs. And then you also have the humanitarian that we know already. That shows the shops. And then we have humanitarian Nepal map box satellite. Which doesn't seem to show anything. Uh, open cycle map. So the open cycle map usually shows streets and pedestrian areas and of course cycle paths and pubs and bicycle shops and then we have Sputnik RU. Not gonna bother with that so I'm trying to decide between humanitarian and the black and white one. This is not great on the printer and it's also outdated. I did a little bit I did a little bit of editing there yesterday. Some of them are in the wrong place. So I'm going to go with the black and, and zoom in and try to get the whole street onto the one page. I'm not too concerned about this building here and I know that's the community church that won't change anytime soon. So like that, it's not great. I could also go with the two by two. But then I might lose track because it comes out in four separate sheets of paper. I might lose track of which building goes where. So I'm going to try to use it like that. It would be handy if you could rotate the map a little bit. But you can't at the moment. So I will click make an atlas. And there shouldn't be any problems with this now because it's only black and white and it's only one page. Sometimes you get the problem when you use the satellite view and you have more than one page that bits of your PDF will be blackened out. That's probably a timeout problem or something like that. So just go back and click make an atlas again. So we get this preview here. We get the location of the map. We can zoom in. But we know where it is and this is the preview so you get everything that's inside this black frame and it tells you the name of the atlas irish town and that it's one page and then you click on download pdf and that's what's going to be printed the qr code sometimes gets in the way with the pages just warning you, it's not here because there's no building here that it could cover up. And again, in the top right, you get the name of the atlas and then a URL that you could find it under and A1, which is not relevant here because it's only the one page. But if you have um, an atlas with more than one page, you get a grid with A1, A2, a3 and then b1 b2 b3 and so on and so forth so it's like a jigsaw puzzle that you can push together into a one big map then and the first page in those is usually an overview so i will print this off and be on my way to do the survey i've scanned my piece of paper at 300 dpi 200 is recommended but the scanner was set on 300 so i just went with that and I have to say, it was very difficult to find out where which building was because you can't really see the outline of each building the way this black and white map is done. So maybe I should have gone with the humanitarian one instead. But you live and learn. So I marked all the shops and also the entrances with a little X, which is useful for people with visual impairment to have the entrances marked on the map and some phone numbers, some house numbers as well. There weren't a lot of them. Number three isn't there anymore, uh, but I remember maybe two years ago, they painted the shop front and the tree was still there and I remember taking a picture. I can't find the picture, but I remember where it was. So that's the only number that was on the on that side of the road. And on the other side of the road, what, there was a lot of reconstruction going on in the last year or two. 
So number 11, 12a, 12, 17a and 17 I would say are house numbers that were put on recently. I will upload that now onto the field paper website and then talk you through how I'm editing the map. We're on the field papers website again. And before we clicked on make yourself an atlas, if you remember, and I've taken it into the field, so to speak, already. So now we're at the third window and I can click upload pages you photographed. And you see here, like I said before, it has to be at least 200 DPI. And uh, the image format has to be JPEG, PNG, TIFF or GIF and no PDFs. So I click on browse and go to the folder where the file is in, click on that, either du double click or click on the file once and then click open. And that starts the upload process. And then it processes the image. And it's very small here because it's only the one page. So I'll zoom in a bit. So you scroll down then and you can see you can edit it in the ID editor, which is what I'm going to do in Potlatch and also in JOSM. But because I've only worked with the ID editor so far in these tutorials, I'll stick with that. That opens the ID editor. And if you haven't logged in yet, you have to do it. Now, and we can click on edit now. And you see it has loaded the field papers map in the background. If I zoom out a bit, you can see the outline of it, the extent. You see how only that part has a background map and all the, the rest of it is all black. There's no reference. So we don't know what to map there. You can also see, I'll zoom in again, that I didn't quite get the reference points for all the shops because I couldn't see on the black and white field papers where one building ended and the next one started. So I got it a bit wrong, but we can also switch between this view, the field papers view, and let's say the Etsy one. So the field papers one is down here at custom. And we can switch around here to Esri, for example. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back to the field papers view. And I had surveyed this side of the road already, so just gonna check uh, if it still applies. Kilkenny Community Church. The phone number isn't yet in the database. Oh. Five, six, seven, seven, oh, three, nine, six, oh. And that's all. Correct so far. I hadn't added the cake face lab because I'm not quite sure how to do that. I have to look that up. If there is something like kitchen, open kitchen or something. I will put in, oh, so we have numbers here. The one next to the, what's it called? The cat and the fiddle is number 11, which would be this one, I presume. So we can add that to the address field, 11. Mm. Maybe actually split the building here. Well, the thing is, 
it's a bit tricky. 11 is the the residential entrance that was on the door into the residential area and 12A was on the shop. So I'll figure that out later. Do the shops um, on the other side. We have Recharge Kilkenny, Slipyard, Tick, Mini Max Convenience Store. No, actually, after the zip yard is the Kilkenny Tile Store. So, shop. There's probably no tile store. Tile stairs. Huh. Who would have thought? Name Kilkenny Tile Store. And the next one then is. Minimax convenience store. So we set the next point, put in the name Minimax. Convenience is not um, part of the name, that's just for me to know what kind of a shop it is. So shop. Convenience. Next one is on post, which is already defined as in the building. I don't like that what to, to define whole buildings as a shop because they move so often. The, the post office isn't going to move very fast. So then the next one is the Chinese takeaway. That's really already defined. We can add the street address to the building. The next one then is the tire shop it might actually be that these two buildings are one and that is the the garage so i will um merge them okay after the tires is blinds boutique which you can define as shop vacant, which is very convenient because if you do that for your whole town, you can then run an overpass Strobo query to find all the vacant shops, which can be quite interesting. And then the next one is the barber shop. Which you define as shop hair dresser. And then nail only. Because a barber shop is usually only for men. And it's also closed um, because of COVID. So under COVID-19 pandemic hours, when COVID-19 is over and we don't use this anymore, you can forget about that. Closed. And the next one it's like a pop-up gallery. It also has the barbershop written on the window, so I'm just gonna leave that. It's it's probably also vacant, but I'm not quite sure about the state of that. So we have all the shops now, and I'll save that. And I'll come in later and do a bit of fine-tuning. So this is the result now. You can see there are a few more shops displayed. I can't zoom in anymore because it's the standard open street map view. But you can see number 17 is new and 12A and 12 are split. And number 3 you can't see because I can't zoom in more. But I will change to the cycle OSM. Which is by the way a new layer that was just released last week. So I can zoom in a bit more. So you can see number 17 in this one and 17A and number 3. And the numbers up here. 
but then again you can't see all the shops because the cycling map is really only about getting food and well maybe the post office is of importance i was trying to use the humanitarian one but it takes always a while to update so it doesn't really show all the changes yet see the 12 and 12a are still in one building all in all, um, I'm not actually sure if field papers is a great way to do it, unless you have the buildings outlined perfectly already with previous work. I think the street complete method is better. Again, you also need to have the buildings outlined already. Maybe it was because of the black and white view, the black and white map that didn't really work that well. I might try another short street if I can think of one and use the humanitarian map as the base map but um, yeah just try it out yourself I guess it might be different in different places and um, yeah good luck with that thank you for watching and see you in the next video